magic mushrooms, where do you start? Okay, we're going to talk about that today and a lot more, so stand by. Hey there, welcome back. Dr. Dave, Microdose You, how are you? Now, I've gotten a lot of questions lately about just how do you, how do, you do this microdosing thing? And I've done so many episodes on this already. In fact, I'm going to talk to you about this today. I'm going to kind of give you the short version, and it's going to absolutely help you get started with this. However, if you have not listened to the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Microdosing Magic Mushrooms, that's one of the podcast uh, episodes titles, The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Microdosing Magic Mushrooms, I totally recommend that you after you listen to this, go back, check that out, because that's going to be a lot more detailed. Hey, by the way, before we get started, real quickly, I want to thank Flinksman. Flinksman left a review on Apple Podcasts, and Flinksman said, changed my life. Can't wait for the next show. Flinksman, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. As I said, I see every rating and review that takes place online, no matter what the platform. So... Um, I really appreciate that. And if you're listening to this, if you want to just jump in there, give me a quick rating and or a review, I will tell you that it is greatly appreciated and noticed. Okay, so how do you start? What, what do you do if you're, you've done your research, you want to go ahead and start microdosing magic mushrooms? And your reasons might be varied. You know, a lot of people do this for mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, there, there are many, many more. And then other people want to do this just to kind of enhance their lives. They want to be better at their work. They want to be better in their relationships. They want to be like more clear and have like more vision and more purpose in their lives. There's so many reasons to do it. But whatever your reason is, we're going to go through this fairly quickly, and I'm going to give you the like how to start um, now, remember, I do not talk about sourcing at all, so please don't email me and ask me where to get magic mushrooms, um, and also I recommend that you do um, magic mushrooms in an area where it is not illegal, so make sure you pay attention to the law, do it um, you know, safely where you can, and um, so, so yeah, you need to secure your source. You need to make sure you're getting these from somebody that either you know or somebody that you know knows them. In other words, don't just go blindly on the internet and hope for the best because, you know, there's a very good chance you could get ripped off. I'm not saying you will, but there's so many, unfortunately, there, there are so many scammers out there now, and we have to be aware of this. So just make sure you get a referral or a recommendation or at least you, you know um, you know your source. Let's just, let's just say it like that. Now, um, when you're, if you are microdosing, I feel, at least to start, the best uh, way to, to actually ingest the medicine is to get them in capsule form. So make sure your source, it's probably easier, especially if you're new to this, if your source weighs them out and does all the work for you and puts them in the capsules. And it's, it's, just, it's just a clean, easy way to, to take your medicine. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions is, well, how much do I take? What's my dosage? How often do I need days off? And again, I talk about this in, in really, really great detail in the podcast episode, The Absolute Beginner's Guide. What I'm going to say today is a little bit different than that because uh, since I recorded that episode, actually, I've learned that it really is, it doesn't matter that much. The dosage is not crucial. So typically for a microdose, and again, a microdose is, is a dose where it's generally about a tenth, one-tenth, 10% of a psychoactive dose. So you're not going to be feeling trippy or high. I mean, you shouldn't be. And if you are, you've taken a little too much for a microdose, which again, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to be fine. But just the first time you take a microdose, be careful and be in an area where, you know, you don't have to drive, you don't have to be responsible for your kids, or you don't have to work necessarily. Just the first time or so, just be careful with that. But again, the dosage is not really crucial. I tell people that a good beginning dose is 50 milligrams. And again, you want to make sure you can convert pretty well from milligrams to grams because a lot of people do talk in terms of grams. So 50 milligrams, if we just take the decimal over um, is with three places, it's 0.05 grams 
0.05 grams. So that's like the very low end of a microdose, and the high end of a microdose is somewhere around 200, 250, maybe stretching it even to 300 milligrams. And again, so that would be 0.2 or 0.25 or 0.3 grams. And converting back to milligrams, that's 200, 250, or 300. So you can kind of convert back and forth. Um, The 300 is a little bit on the high end of a microdose, as I said, and you and you could definitely feel some type of a um, some type of a psychoactive effect with 250, 300. However, again, it's not going to be a full on trip. There's just no way. Um, you know, there, is there a chance you could possibly have some closed eye visuals with with a dose of 250 or 300? It's possible, but again, that's not even that's not even likely at all. So, kind of zero in on your dose, see what you're comfortable with. Um, and it's it's not super crucial at all. And I would go ahead and start, and I would take uh, your dose um, maybe three days in a row, and then take a day or two off, and then do another three days in a row. Now again, um, it's not this is not set in stone, and there's there's really no right and there's really no wrong. So if you take your dose and the next day you just don't feel like it, and then the next day you do, and then you take a couple of days off, and then you, you know, as long as you're as long as you're getting this enough, and you might say, well, Doctor Dave, well, how much is enough? I don't know. I'm brand new to this. Well, again. It, it, it will work for you even if you take a few days off here and there. It will work. And it's also advised to take a few days off here and there. Now, when I first started, I was pretty strict with my regimen. I went like three days on, then I took two days off, then three days on again after that, two days off, alternated. And, and I just kept going with that until I got to the point where I saw that it was working well. I felt really good. And then I also felt that... I just don't have to be so strict by the book. If I'm doing something and I don't want to dose, that's fine. If I want to go ahead and take um, my dose uh, four, five, six days in a row, that turned out to be okay also. There was um, a month or two that I actually dosed every single day, and it was effective. So, you know, there are you're going to hear all kinds of suggestions and, and instructions. Like, you know, you can't do this more than two or three days in a row because you're going to build up a tolerance. Well, again, I'm not so sure that's true. I've done it. I've done it a month straight. I've done it actually, I think it might have even been six weeks straight. And it worked. It worked. Now, everybody is different. You might have to take some more time off for tolerance breaks. I'm not really sure. But again, it's not, there's just nothing set in stone. And the good thing about this episode I'm doing today is I've kind of I've kind of lightened up and say you know kind of just do what you feel and it's it's just not the doses are not that crucial and the time off is just not that crucial at all what can you expect well pretty early on after the first day or two actually I I just started feeling better now, I was I was taking Lexapro, which is an SSRI. I was taking some Valium as needed because I was really into some pretty tough, pretty tough depression and anxiety. And almost immediately, I was able to stop the Valium. And then, probably oh, I don't know, six, seven, eight months later, I was able to start weaning off of the um, Lexapro, which I totally did. And I'm not I'm glad to say I'm not on any pharmaceuticals right now for mental health. And that's a real win because so the this this medicine this this really um, wonderful incredible plant medicine has helped me and so many other people not only get off the pharmaceuticals because again if pharmaceuticals are working for you really well and you enjoy them and you, and you you think you're doing great then that's okay I personally just did not want to be on pharmaceuticals for mental health the rest of my life so I wanted to see if I could figure out something better, what was better, and how it would make me feel compared to the pharmaceuticals. And even though the pharmaceuticals were working, I will tell you that the feeling I have on a daily basis now, having after having microdosed for two years plus now, the feeling is is just there's no comparison. It's so much better. It's a more of it's more of a, like a a natural feeling, if you will, the, the feeling that I think people should have every day. Just feeling like you're kind of just floating and flowing through life effortlessly, and everything's working out well. That, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have issues and problems. No, far from that. You're gonna you're a human being. You're going to have things that that just like happen, but. You'll be able to get through them a lot easier, and you won't have that 
stressed, anxious, weird feeling that maybe you have now or that you used to have. There's going to be a big, big difference. So that's that's how you get started. Now, they, they say, and, and I'm a firm believer of this, that you can't just pop these things like, like pills, like capsules, and, and then kind of set it and forget it. There are other things that you should be doing along with your microdosing, especially if you're doing this for, for mental health purposes. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a couple little things that I, that I highly recommend you do. One of them is a morning ritual. And I found that this works so well in conjunction with microdosing. And it's, it's really, really easy. The three parts to this morning ritual. I want you to do them all because I promise you, I absolutely promise you they will work. The first part is as soon as you wake up in the morning, I want you to watch or listen to uh, about five minutes of comedy, five to 10 minutes of something very, very funny. It could be on YouTube. It could be on, on uh, uh, an audio book. It could be, it could be a, you know, a podcast, anything. But it's got to be really funny, and it's got to make you laugh. So I want you to do that for five minutes, 10 minutes in the most. You don't really have to do any more than 10 minutes every single morning. This will set you up to have a wonderful day. I don't have. To, I don't want to go through the uh, science of how this works. Um, you're going to have to have a little bit of trust because I've done the research and my friend Trip has helped me with this too. And it it really, really does work. I promise you. So that's part one of this little morning routine. The second part of the morning routine is I want you to have, a, there's a mantra I want you to say every single morning, about 10 times. I want you to say this. And I'd like you to commit it to memory because when you commit it to memory, it's better than if you're just like reading it off of a journal or off of a page. You can do that at first, but it's so easy. You can commit it to memory like within a day or two, I'm pretty sure. It goes like this. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. It's a positive day. I am positive and I will stay positive. I am centered and I will stay centered. And I have a shield around me that's protecting me from negative and bad. Now, you can reword it a little bit if you want to. It does not have to be my exact words, but it's got to be pretty darn close to that. And I want you to say that um, approximately 10 times every single morning. And the third part of this little morning routine could, could take place most of the day, but I want you to think of a... Um, a really, really good, positive, positively exciting time of your life. Something that you did, like some event, some event that you did and you remember it and it was just really wonderful and really positive. And when you think about this event, you have just very, very happy feelings. Okay, do you have it? You can think of it later. You don't have to do it this second, but I know you have one. I know you have probably several of these. Pick your favorite one or you can alternate. Now, Whenever something, let's say, negative comes into your life or your, your, your thought process or your brain or whatever, something negative comes in, starts to work its way in, um, I want you to not think of that negative thought, but immediately replace it with your positive thought that you're going to come up with. I want you to replace it with it. So let's just say you're you're going about your day, something kind of bad comes into your mind, you're worried about something, you're worried about like something that somebody doesn't like you or you did something wrong or something like that. I want you to totally forget that thought, wipe it out and then replace it with that really, really wonderful positive thought. Get in the habit of doing this all the time. Whenever you have a negative thought that comes in, I want you to replace it. And I want you to let me know how that works out. It's a wonderful little uh, exercise that you will utilize maybe for the rest of your life if you, if, you, if you take this seriously, and this does work. Now, the only other thing I'm going to recommend, I mean, there are many things. There are tons of things, journaling and yoga and meditation. and all, there's so, There are a million things you can do, um, along with talk therapy too. But the other thing I'm going to highly recommend is that you – Try to do as much breathing through your nose as possible. Nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is a total game changer. So if you can just kind of um, think to yourself as you're awake during the day, if you ever catch yourself breathing through your mouth, change that up, close your lips, and breathe through your nose. Now, at first, it might not be so easy. You're going to have to have some cheap breaths, of course, through your mouth. But as you get used to this and as you practice and as you exercise this, 
you're going to find that breathing through your nose is actually more natural. Now, I, I, again, I won't get into the deep science and the, the, the ex- extensive explanation, but I will tell you that breathing through your nose is, is a total game changer than breathing through your mouth. Um, it's, it, the um, air gets warmed better. It gets filtered better. It uh, works. It creates um, nitric oxide, which is a gas that, um, again, is um, going to make you healthier the more that's circulating in in your system i won't get any deeper than that you could do a search for that nitric oxide it's a very very important gas that when you breathe through your mouth you're not getting enough or you're probably not getting almost any so uh, if you want to look that up i'm going to recommend you read this book called breath by uh, james nestor a great guy great book this will explain all of the breathing stuff and again if i can recommend one thing other than that morning ritual it is proper nasal breathing it is a game changer i promise you you will feel a difference all throughout your body physical and mental for sure okay that was kind of the to sum it up that was a bit a bit of a beginner's guide to microdosing magic mushrooms again i don't go into as much detail here as i do on the episode the absolute beginner's guide to microdosing magic mushrooms um, check that out if you're still if you still have some questions if you're not sure and again i always um, check my email which is run dr dave at gmail.com it's r-u-n-d-r-d-a-v-e at gmail.com I really hope these episodes are helpful. I will try to answer as many questions as I can in future episodes. And if you have not hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? You know you want to subscribe to this because we are, we're the podcast that gives you the, the best information. I've listened to the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get the most information here. I'm going to, I'm going to make it a point to do that. And if I could just come out of this microphone for a couple seconds and give you a hug... I would do so, trust me, if there's any way I could do it. Because I love you guys. I love you all. Um, I appreciate you. Um, Give me that uh, rating and review if you possibly can. Of course, if you think there's a five-star podcast, go in and give me the five stars. It helps the show so much. It really does. Until next time, I'm Dr. Dave. Microdose you. Love you.